there's just something calming about a river flowing through the rocks and being able to listen to this so close, it's so relaxing. And it's something that we barely ever do, us city folk. I'm in the middle of the Mist Trail in Yosemite National Park in California. And this park was the, the inspiration. Parts of this park were the inspiration for Teddy Roosevelt to start the conservation efforts, which led to many parts of the United States being preserved up to this day and hopefully forever. And I'm very glad that they were able to preserve this because this place is just amazing. Everywhere you look, it's just, wow. There are many times in which you'll stop for a trail, even if you're tired or especially if you're tired. But if you let yourself stop for a while, take a deep breath, truly admire the landscape, you'll be just awe-inspired. And I could go on talking about a lot of things right now. There's a lot of inspiration, but at the same time, the water flowing just gives a sense of relaxation that I kind of don't want to talk about anything. I just want to show you the flow of the water and the tranquility of this place. It's amazing, isn't it? Just being here and top of the rock, in the middle of the trees and the river flowing, the waterfall. This is a spring river, which I never thought about it being called spring river because it starts flowing in the spring when the ice from the snow melts on top of the mountain. I never thought about it like that. I thought springs was something else, like hot springs kind of thing, like the water flowing from the ground. But apparently, spring water may have this connotation as well, and I had no idea what I've been told. And I'm not sure how accurate that is, but I have been told so. So let's take it at face value and, and say that spring water is called that because it comes in the spring. It starts coming in the spring. One thing about this water is that it's super cold because it's the ice that's melting. And you can imagine that it's a lot of ice because it's, even though it's not, they said that it's supposed to have more water at this time of year. So even though it should be flowing more, it's, it, there is still a lot of water flowing from the top of the mountain. and. In this region, they need the snow in the winter because that's where they get all of their water for the whole year from. So the years that snow less, they simply don't have enough water. Uh, I could go a little bit farther away, but it turns out we came a bit late today. So I won't be able to go to the top of the top of the waterfall and also there would be no chance in hell that I would be able to go to the top of the Iron Dome because you have to get out at like 4 a.m. and it takes pretty much the whole day to go there and then come back and one I didn't come that early of course I'm not in the physical condition I should be and I'm not prepared for hiking to go climb that thing and also doing it alone just isn't that much fun, I think. I think this kind of thing you gotta do with people, you know, especially if you can do it in a group, like at least four people, five people, even more maybe, because it's something that 
you'll be always able to cherish as a memory that you'll be able to cherish decades from now. And you'll be able to remember this and you'll be able to tell your kids or your grandkids even about that time when you came to that place and you climbed that mountain. But of course you can do it alone. And I'm all for doing things alone from time to time, especially in the beginning because you gotta learn how to live with yourself and how to truly be able to embrace solitude. For instance, right now I am embracing my solitude, being here surrounded by nature. And of course, from time to time, someone will come in the back because there's a trail up there. But apart from that, I'm alone in nature right now and just listening to the water and feeling the wind and just, you know, the cold from the, this rock that I'm on top of, just feeling it all. And you, you need to learn how to embrace solitude first, I think. But at the same time, there are things that you better do with more people because you'll be able to have those dividends, those memory dividends for the rest of your life. And there are trips that I did in the past with my dad or with my dad and my uncles, my dad and my cousin, my whole family. We've done a bunch of trips and that memory dividend of being able to talk about the trip years after it happened or even decades after it happened because there are trips that we did when I was a kid, when I was a teenager. And when my sister, who's eight years younger than me, she was a little kid even when we started doing these trips. And we remember things from when she was little or from when I was like eight, 10, 12, 15 years old. And we remember these things because we were traveling. And usually when you're traveling, since it's a different environment, different experience, it's easier to remember. So by doing these things with the people you love, your, your parents, your kids, your brothers, your best friends, those memory dividends will compound for the rest of your life. So the earlier you do it by the law of compound interest, the earlier you do these things that will give you memory dividends, the better. So if you can do it when you're a kid, when, if you can do it when you're young, it's best because you'll have decades to enjoy those memories, decades to talk to people about, decades to have interesting stories to tell people. But, and that's one of the things about the fire movement that I talked about in another video and why I pretty much, I fought about the fire movement for a while, but nowadays I pretty much fired the fire movement because of course you can work your ass off when you're 20, when you're 25, 30, to try to have an earlier retirement. But one thing, we have no idea how the world will be 10 years from now, 50 years from now especially. So many people make the mistake of saving up money and investing, but then that money is not enough. So they have to go back to work anyways. That's one thing. But the other thing is that if you're just eating cup noodles and if you're just like drinking water, you never have the things that you really enjoy and they don't even need to be like super expensive, but like you never let yourself get some coffee at Starbucks for instance. And when you do that kind of thing repeatedly, you're not letting yourself enjoy life. And you know, things can happen, you might die at any given moment, like something may happen, you may have a heart attack, God forbid, but things happen, man. And that's why I think you need to enjoy life while you can, especially while your knees don't hurt when you're trying to climb something like this, because I see many people that they just can't climb it up anymore because their knees hurt or the, their feet hurt or whatever the reason, their back 
But while you're still young, while you still have the vitality, you need to do these things. You need to enjoy the things. You were put in this world to enjoy a little bit and to do some cool shit, have some stories, be the interesting person in any room because you'll be able to tell them the story of when you were in the middle of the Andes in Peru or you know when you had that girlfriend in Namibia because you spent a summer there and you had this girlfriend over there or you went to Mongolia or whatever it is, something different that you did, something different that you allowed yourself to do. But if you're only living to work or actually, yeah, a thing about living to work or working to live, and if you're only thinking about making money in the short term, you might be ending up not even optimizing for money making as well because you you may be counting the the pennies and forgetting about the hundred dollar bills you might be doing stuff that in the short term your account will have more money and you might feel like you're being smart about it but in the long run you're not putting yourself in the situations in which you would meet people and in which you would learn skills that you could leverage and that would make you richer in the long run. So sometimes by skimping out on going on to the cheapest gym, for example, you will not meet that guy that will give you a, go a great job with good pay or you will not, by skimping on courses, for example, or on, on a book because you think, oh, $20 is too expensive for a book, but that book might have taught you lessons that you could leverage for the rest of your life, or that at least some lessons that you could use in a business or at a job, or that would make your health better. But since you think that $20 is too much, you'll end up not spending that money and not having that benefit. And the earlier you have the benefit, the better because you'll be able to have a benefit. For instance, if you learn how to eat better, if you learn about nutrition or about exercise, you'll have health benefits for the rest of your life because you'll be able to use those first principles and improve your health for the rest of your life. And if you have kids or if you have other people that you like, that you care about, you can teach them about that as well. So they will have a better life as well. So. You see how these things compound and how you'll have benefits by doing things that in the short run, okay, you, you'll be spending and you might not be maximizing um, for your account or if you want to retire early or something. In the short run, that might seem okay. But actually, if you find things that you actually like doing, things that you actually enjoy, you wouldn't even need to retire early in the first place. Because you see, people who actually love what they do or that they actually have some passion about something that they're doing, they go on and they work. Even, of course, they might not work as much, but they still love doing that thing. Even when they're 70, when they're 80. My grandpa, for instance, he died at 83 and he had a, a stroke but that same week he he was still going to the office of course he didn't actually work that much anymore he didn't it wasn't like he needed to work to survive he already had he already had enough income from um how do you say this in english like you know after your retirement and you get a little bit of money every month and also he had a few investments a little bit of um a few real estate like things that he would have an income like he, he could live a pretty decent life but he still he was a lawyer also a businessman formerly but a lawyer but he still have like 
one thing or two that he he do for a friend of his as a lawyer, and he'd go to the office mainly, like to to talk to the girls at the office and like have some coffee and you know that old old man kind of shit. And he also had like this little wouldn't call it a ranch because it's quite small actually. I'm not sure how you guys call it in English, but you know like this rural rural like this farm kind of setting didn't have much, many animals like a few chickens and stuff and but he did have a lot of trees in which he grow a bunch of fruits and sometimes he'd give us some of the fruits from that place and that was his life up to the very end he was doing these things like because these things like getting out of the house and he still drove at the end of his life they made him feel useful. They made him, they gave him purpose. Even after his three sons were already old, like old, I mean, not old, but you know, my dad was already in his 50s. His other two sons, one I think was 39, the other was 43 or something like that when he died. So, so you know, my, his kids were were grown up. He already I already was relatively old. I think I was twenty seven when he died. So and I'm the oldest grandson of course. But yeah, like by all accounts, he'd done his mission in this world. And but he still had something that he'd do every day. You still have somewhere to go because I think for many people, for me at least, of course, by all means, if you're doing like this terrible job in which you're doing backbreaking work, of course, you need to retire from that as early as possible because that's shit that shouldn't be done by humans anymore. And hopefully we'll have robots to do that soon enough, like all of it. But otherwise, you got to find something. And especially now, because our generation might be able to live forever, or at least to extend our life in such a way that there will be a lot of disruption in the coming years, in the coming decades. So if you're able to survive the next 20 years, there will be a lot of disruption, hopefully for the best. Let's work in a way that leads to the best possible outcomes, hopefully. But you know, there are, we are in a crossroads in the timeline. I say this in a lot of videos, but we might go to like the utopia route or we might go to the dystopia route. And it's a very thin razor. It, we're on the razor's edge. So, but anyways, I don't remember how I started this video, actually. It was just about the calm of the water and shit. But as always, it's about remembering your purpose and, and finding your purpose in life and, and letting yourself enjoy life a little bit. Like go to different places, see things like this waterfall and of course Yosemite is one of the most beautiful places in the whole world and I, <laughs> I feel so fortunate to be here but there are beautiful places everywhere like there's nature everywhere so if you're living in another continent in another country I'm sure that there are beautiful places that you can go to it can be a park it can be a even a little square or, you know, somewhere in the mountains, somewhere in the beach, whatever it is for you, whatever you like. But don't, dude, just go and do it. Like many times, there are many places around us that we've heard that are good, that are awesome, but we never go to them. And that's really common. Like I've done it myself. And you end up saying, oh, maybe another time. You know, when someone comes to visit or something, but you never end up actually going to the places that are close to you. And like, 
can be a museum, it can be a different coffee shop, it can be like some cool building near you. And we end up not going to these places and that's a shame and we should go. So if you're still watching this, thanks for watching. I hope you had a good time. And please leave a comment, like what was the main thing that you thought about while watching this video? What's the place that you wanna go that you've always wanted to go that's not so far from where you live and that you'll definitely go next weekend or at least next month? So please comment, keep rocking. Peace from Yosemite Valley. I'll leave you with a last shot from this place where I am in the Mist Trail because it's so fucking amazing. But I'll start, I'll stop talking now. Just let you guys listen to the waves, listen to the water.